Okay, this lecture talks about the endocrine system. Learning objectives are listed here. So part one is just an introduction. So the endocrine system, even though that this organ system is covered later on in the textbook, I like to cover this up front because with a lot of our lectures, we kind of go back to talking about all of the hormones and what they do and how these organ systems communicate with each other and how they're regulated. So having this foundation up front kind of gives me something that I can refer back to as we go through all of the specific organ systems. So the endocrine system is responsible for communication. That's its major role. Similar to that of the nervous system. The nervous system is responsible for communication. But with the endocrine system, the organs of the endocrine system communicate by hormones. So they release hormones into the bloodstream and the hormones are going to travel quite a distance to get to their target or the eventual site that they're going to produce some type of change in. So they are produced in one spot, they travel through the bloodstream, they get to their target or their goal spot and then they do something in that location. They send the message that they were supposed to deliver to that particular place. So we'll start with some basic definitions here and this all kind of comes back to the cell. The endocrine system, although it's organs and glands that are producing these hormones, the cells within them are actually the ones that are producing the hormones. Now we can have autocrine where chemicals are released by that cell to stimulate the cell itself. So auto means self. So that's kind of self-stimulating chemicals. When a cell releases out chemicals to stimulate itself, that's known as autocrine. Paracrine, para means nearby or next to. So paracrine is when a cell releases out chemicals that act on nearby cells. And endocrine, we're talking about when a cell releases chemicals that act on a very far distance. So they're going to act on an organ or a gland or some type of tissue in the body at a far distance and the hormones, those chemical messengers, are going to have to travel through the bloodstream to get there. So what is a hormone? A hormone is a chemical messenger. So we try to communicate things in the body and hormones are chemicals that can stimulate a response in a target organ. What are some of the things that hormones do? They aid in reproduction, growth, and development, like sex steroid hormones, the thyroid hormones, prolactin, the growth hormone. They help maintain the internal environment or maintain homeostasis. So aldosterone, the parathyroid hormone, vitamin D, those are examples. And then they aid in energy production, utilization, and storage. Examples of those include insulin, glucagon, the thyroid hormones, cortisol, and the growth hormone. Hormones are divided into two main classes. There's the water-soluble hormones and lipid-soluble hormones. Water-soluble can freely float through the bloodstream. They're usually protein-based or amino acid-based. Lipid-soluble requires special transporters to get through the bloodstream. And with lipid-soluble hormones, those are going to be our steroid-based hormones. If you look at this picture and you remember me talking about steroids, this is a steroid compound. You can tell that by the four rings that you see present. So these steroid-based hormones are going to be predominantly your sex hormones or your reproductive hormones, vitamin D, and so forth. A water-soluble hormone has the ability to come in contact with receptors on the surface of the cell membrane. If the hormone is going to produce a change in the inside of that um, target cell, it's going to have to travel through the membrane through special transport proteins. Now with steroid hormones, steroid hormones can typically go right through the plasma membrane because they're fat-based or lipid-based, so they can freely diff diffuse through the membrane in some cases. And these steroid ho hormones have the capability of 
binding to receptors in the nucleus, and then they can produce their change there. Now in advanced AMPIA, you would go into more of exactly the signaling mechanisms and um, like the second messenger systems involving G proteins and so forth. But in this class, you just need to know what the two classes of hormones are. There's water soluble and the lipid soluble or steroid based hormones. So just as a radio signal only plays on radios that are tuned in to the right station, hormones only produce responses in target cells. So the hormone is going to produce a change in a target cell. Now what makes that target cell a target is certain receptors that are on the surface of that cell. So there's only certain cells that have receptors for the hormone in play. And that hormone can only bind to those specific receptors. So even though the hormone is released everywhere in the body, it's not going to be able to do things with every one of the cells. It can only bind to specific receptors on the surface of its target cell. So the target cell is the specific cell that the hormone is going to produce a change in, or that the hormone is going to deliver a message to. So how are hormones stimulated to be released? There's not many endocrine glands that actually store hormones. With the exception of the thyroid gland that can store T3 and T4, most of our endocrine glands are producing these hormones as they're needed. So what is gonna stimulate their production and then re release? Well, humoral stimuli is talking about the release of a hormone in response to a signal in the blood. So something in the bloodstream stimulated the release of that hormone. Let's say there is excess glucose in the blood. Well, that would signal the release of insulin because insulin is going to decrease blood glucose levels. That's humoral stimuli. Neural stimuli. Neural stimuli is the release of hormones in response to a nerve impulse. An example of that would be oxytocin. So once that uterus contracts and pushes the baby's head down on the cervix, that cervix is going to start to dilate, which sends a nerve impulse to release more oxytocin and keep that positive feedback mechanism going until the baby is delivered. So neural stimuli, it's the release of a hormone in response to a nerve impulse. Hormonal stimuli is the release of a hormone in response to another hormone. Examples of that would be like how thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormone. Another term for that process is known as being a tropic hormone. So a tropic hormone stimulates another endocrine gland to release their hormones. We'll learn about some of the tropic hormones when we talk about the endocrine gland, or sorry, the pituitary gland. Most of the endocrine system diseases are due to hypersecretion or hyposecretion of a hormone. Even in the case of cancer, when cancer gets into an endocrine organ, it either causes hypersecretion or hyposecretion. In the case of autoimmune diseases that have involved the endocrine system, we have a hypersecretion or a hyposecretion. So these two are really the basis for what can go wrong with your uh, endocrine system. Hyper means a lot or excess. So hypersecretion is talking about excess secretion of hormone. Hypo, if you think about like hypothermia is a decrease in your body temperature. Hyposecretion is talking about not secreting enough hormone. So there's a delicate balance of hormone secretion that has to happen. If your body is gonna be able to function properly, we can't have hypersecretion or hyposecretion going on. Now this slide just goes through an overview of where these different endocrine glands are located. So we have the hypothalamus in the brain and the hypothalamus produces hormones for the, pituit the part of the pituitary, the posterior pituitary. And then that hypothalamus also regulates the release of hormones from the anterior pituitary. So the hypothalamus
pituitary have this tight association. The pituitary gland is sometimes referred to as the master endocrine gland because it produces the most hormones and regulates many of the other endocrine glands in the body. The pineal gland is located back here in the brain. So those three are the main endocrine glands in the brain. In the neck, you have the thyroid gland, and on the back side of the thyroid, you have four to five parathyroid glands. On the tops of both of the kidneys, you have an adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland is actually composed of an adrenal cortex, or the outer portion, and adrenal medulla, which is the inner portion. And both components produce different types of hormones. Then you have the pancreas, and the pancreas is kind of hidden behind the stomach and behind the duodenum. It actually connects into the first part of your small intestine here because it's going to produce digestive enzymes. But in addition to that function, its exocrine function, it has an endocrine function. It's going to produce hormones for the body, like insulin, glucagon, and so forth. Then we have the gonads, the ovaries and the testes. Those are going to produce hormones to regulate sex cycles and promote reproduction.